today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here at Radio Free DC, the G. Gordon Liddy Show. Now, on the cover of the Millennium Bug, Michael uh, S. Hyatt's new book, published by Regnery, by the way, which is a uh, first-rate publishing company, here's what it says. Your electricity goes off. The phones are not working. The computer at your local bank crashes. Police and 911 are nowhere to be found. The illusion of social stability is about to be shattered, and nothing can stop it. Can you protect yourself, your family, and everything you have uh, and have worked for? Well, yes, you can. Here's how. And Mr. Hyatt has it all right here in his book, The Millennium Bug. Now, one of the first things that uh, I noticed in here is uh, the, the PCs, the personal computers that so many people have and certainly that I have. Matter of fact, I've got two of them, one portable and one uh, desktop. Uh, mine are... Uh, about a year old tops. Uh, one is Dell and the other is Winbook. Uh, are they, and, and they have um, the latest upgrades of um, Windows 95 in them, are they okay or uh, am I going to have a problem with them too? Well, they're not necessarily okay because the Millennium Bug can buy a PC computer at three different levels. One is at the hardware level. So if the hardware, the actual uh, chip that keeps mm. track of the time on, on the hardware is not compatible, that's a problem. The operating system is another issue that... Uh, that the these these are DOS systems. Yeah, well, DOS systems have a problem. You know, uh, Windows 98 doesn't have a problem. Windows 95 does finally. Microsoft admits there are some problems, and you can actually check that out on their website. Mm. But then there's the application level. I mean, Intuit just got uh, sued, two lawsuits uh, pending a, a, against them, potential class action lawsuits for their popular financial planning program called Quicken, mm -hmm. because uh, the last two versions, not Quicken 98, but the previous two versions, are not year 2000 compliant. Oh, boy. And uh, so a lot of people are jumping in the fray there. Now, uh, if I get a hold of uh, Windows 98 and install it, um, you know, over my uh, Windows 95, or, uh, am I going to be okay? Not necessarily. I wish I could give you a straight answer on that, but here's one way you can find out. First of all, Computer Weekly recently reported that you've got a 50-50 chance of buying a new computer that will not run correctly in the next century if you order right now. Mm. So manufacturers are still shipping computers that are not compliant. But you can go to a website. It's www.righttime, and that's with one T, R-I-G-H-T-I-M-E dot com. Download a program called test2000.zip. And if you run that on your computer, it will tell you where the problems are and will attempt uh, to fix them. Mm. But the truth is, microcomputers are really the least of our worries. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But I mean, I'm just because uh, if the electricity isn't on, why your computer isn't going to do yeah. you any good anyway? I, although I suppose uh, if you've got your own generator, that's helpful. But then what happens when you run out of fuel? Right. Uh, because they can't pump the fuel down at the local uh, uh, fuel dump. We saw that even last week when Galaxy Four went down. Um, the the on the top of the gas stations they couldn't transmit the credit cards off those pumps and right. get them verified so that people could pump gas. Yeah, there you go, uh, folks. By the way, if you've got uh, some questions you'd like to ask Mr. Hyatt, I mean he's the expert, certainly not I. Um, now's the time. Just call one eight hundred GG Liddy. You call now, and we'll get you lined up, and uh, you can ask uh, your own questions. And I'm quite sure that there are people out here that are vastly more computer literate than am I, and can. Uh, ask Mr. Hyatt even better questions uh, than uh, I'm capable of asking him. Uh, one of the things you, uh, you point out is that uh, you take a worst-case scenario and everything breaks down and society starts to break down. Uh, we're going to go into, uh, uh, essentially at first, a barter economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will evolve probably back into a gold standard, will it not? Yeah, I think once you get past uh, the initial phases of that, mm -hmm. uh, where barter is not that efficient of a way of uh, conducting transactions, you're going to get to something that has value, and, and historically that's been silver and gold. Yeah. Uh, assuming the, you know, the crash and, and all kinds of problems with the, uh, the banking system and, and what have you, is it reasonable to... Uh, anticipate that after the problem has been dealt with, however many years that may take, 
you will be able to retrieve your financial assets, whatever they may be, from the various banking institutions, Wall Street investment houses, and so on, where they're held. I, the answer to that is I don't know. I mean, it depends on how the breakdown is and, and what transpires in the meantime. I mean, what political things uh, change? Do we have the same currency or not? Have I mean, it's you know <laughs> speculation. I, I, I really don't know what we might see on the other side of that. But I do think that if your assets are in something that historically has proven to be valuable, like silver and gold, then you're going to be able to emerge on the other side of that crisis with your uh, assets intact. I can certainly see gold, uh, but, you know, the, uh, and at one time we, we used silver here in this country, but um, what's the case uh, for silver rather than, say, platinum or something? Why not just concentrate on gold? Well, the, the, the value of it is is that you've got, uh, if you take silver dimes, for example, pre-1965 uh, mm -hmm. junk silver, silver dimes, you've got 14 transactions to an ounce. So mm -hmm. it's uh, more easily denominated into smaller units. It's hard to go down and buy a loaf of bread and shave off a piece of a gold coin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too valuable in a sense uh, for smaller transactions. And silver has the advantage of being uh, applicable to more uh, simple transactions like that. Okay. Uh, what, is the, uh, uh, what is the anticipated uh, effect on um, automobiles? So how are we going to are we going to be uh, uh, immobile? I, I don't know necessarily from the from the uh, automobiles themselves. I mean, the modern automobile has anywhere from fourteen to forty five micro controllers uh, embedded in the engines and the electronics <laughs> and all of that, and that's why we can't work under the shade tree anymore on our our cars. Um, I haven't read any reports where that's going to keep the car from functioning, although it may uh, introduce some anomalies in um, some date sensitive kinds of things that the that the automobile does. But the real issue is going to be, are you going to be able to get gasoline to run it? And a lot of that depends on whether the banking system is still intact, whether the credit card system is still intact, whether those uh, 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 transmitters that verify your credit card transaction and, and v validate that you have credit available, if those can still work. And if the trucks can get the gasoline to the pumps. We've, we've become, uh, the productivity that we're experiencing now in this country has been a result of just-in-time inventories, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, the modern uh, grocery store, for example, in researching the book, I found out that the average supermarket today turns its inventory over three times a week. Boy, that is, uh, that's a lot of trucks on the road. It is. Um, let's take the, you know, the worst case here, uh, that uh, everything goes to hell in the handbasket, and we're down to a barter economy, and uh, uh, there would, it would seem to me that there would be a... Um, Distinct possibility, certainly in certain uh, parts of the country that, that with which we are all familiar, that the social order would break down, and you you uh, you might be back down to social Darwinism, you know, the survival of the fittest, and what have you. Uh, there is a, a government agency which is supposed to deal with that. Uh, that uh, a lot of people are frightened by. That's FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Administration. Uh, they're supposed to uh, deal with that, but they've got a lot of scary ways of dealing with things, uh, mainly having to do with just coming in and throwing a whole lot of people into jail because they uh, they think that they may potentially be troublesome, such as uh, registered gun owners and things of that sort. Have you addressed that? Well, the only thing I've addressed in the book with regard to that is FEMA itself is fighting the Millennium Bug in its own <laughs> systems. Oh, boy. And right now, according to uh, Congressman Horn's uh, last report on this back in December, they're not scheduled to even finish their computer remediations until after the year 2000, about mid-2000. So, you know, I guess if there's any good news in this, mm -hmm. you know, the long arm of Washington, uh, some of that power is going to be gone simply because the computers aren't going to be there to enable it to, to do what it's done in the past. Oh. Well, that could be a plus. Uh, and the right to uh, of the people to keep and bear arms that uh, was guaranteed us uh, in the uh, Second Amendment, uh, that it would not be infringed, is probably going to turn out to be one of the uh, most important uh, constitutional protections That's we true. have. Uh, what, uh, what do you see, uh, or what has your research led you to believe, let's put it that way, that's a little more um, scholarly, um, will, how long will it, the impact take for, for it to manifest itself? Is it going to be 
like one minute after the stroke of midnight, or, or is it going to take a while for things to break down? No, it's, it's going to take a while. But uh, we don't have to wait till the year 2000 to begin seeing this. There's some examples that have already uh, begin, uh, begun to occur. Uh, Visa, of course, in, in some situations, the MasterCard has had to recall uh, a lot of their credit cards and reissue new credit cards. And now they think they're pretty much got them all uh, compliant. But, of course, they rest atop of in, an infrastructure, the banking system, that uh, I don't know of any bank yet that's declared itself Y2K certified and ready to meet the challenge of the year 2000. But there were some examples in the Newsweek uh, article that ran a year ago of uh, encounters with the Millennium Bug already at that point. For example, in England, there were computers at Marks and Anderson Company that mistakenly ordered the destruction of tons of corned beef, believing that it expired in the early days of the century. <laughs> or at a state prison, a computer glitch misread the release date of prisoners and freed them prematurely. Here's kind of a funny one. Um, in Kansas, a 104-year-old woman was given a notice to enter kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to unravel, I think, slowly as we move towards the year 2000. I mean, the lawsuits are already happening. There's about six different lawsuits that I know of that are already, and that's only the beginning. What, what, is, the, uh, uh, what is the theory of the lawsuits? The theory of the lawsuits is that uh, uh, I can be damaged by somebody's failure. I mean, there's a lot of different levels, uh, but I can be damaged as a result of somebody's computers failing. For example, there could be a life-threatening situation where my family or my family's health was damaged as a result of that. Another example is an unresolved uh, Y2K problem that generates uh, lawsuits from clients whose banks, brokers, and money managers um, just damaged or diminished their assets as a result of inaccurate information that came to them well, over the computer. Yeah, but, but usually uh, one may not maintain a lawsuit uh, unless the damage has occurred. Uh, they, they, the courts usually will not entertain a suit right. saying, I think that something is going to happen, therefore I want to sue. Right. They usually won't listen to you. They say, you know, we need the actual damage. Well, the cases that have happened so far, uh, there was one um, fruit and vegetable stand in Michigan that when it tried to process credit tra card transactions with the expiration date after the year 2000, this is the first Y2K lawsuit, mm. it shut down their point of purchase system so that they could not process transactions for hours. Mm. So they maintained that uh, they were damaged in the inability to do their normal course of business, and they lost Understood. thousands of dollars of revenue as a result of that. Sure, and, and the food spoiled and what have you. Okay, we're going to take a uh, break for some crash commercial messages. When we come back, uh, we're going to uh, let you question. Uh, we've got uh, folks already uh, lining up. Uh, Mr. Michael Hyatt, the author of The Millennium Blog. Uh, How to Survive the Coming Chaos, published by Regnery. And am I correct, uh, uh, Mr. Hyatt, that it is now in the bookstores? It is. It's in the bookstores and uh, filtering into some bookstores, but you can ask for it and they can get it for you usually pretty quickly. Okay. We'll be right back. G. Gordon Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. Let's have some love for G. Gordon Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. You're feeling crummy. You have heartburn or upset stomach or a headache. No. Yeah. 66. Well, Tara, listen, I'm going to let you take it over here with your grandma now. Yeah. <laughs> the last time that you and Pop had sex, what year was it? 1962. Oh. oh! So very close. Mike is 30. How could that happen? You had to have done it in 68. <laughs> hey, Grandma, she's got you there. Yes, you do. The Don and Mike Show. Weekday afternoons on the peak. If not, you may be tempted to go out and purchase a new computer. However, this may not be a solution. Now, don't be fooled by the too-good-to-be-true sales that computer stores are offering. Big discounts on software or computers that are on the market today are no bargain if they aren't compliant with the year 2000. So find out before you buy. Don't get stuck with a computer that could be obsolete in just a couple of years. Keep listening to this station to find out more about what you can do to protect yourself. This message is brought to you by Robus Micro Solutions, building roads to the future together. Call Robus today for more information, 627-4233. The number again for Robus Micro Solutions, 627-4233. 98.1 P.E.K. 98.1 The Peak W.P.E.K. presents The Technophile. The Technophile. Hey, it's Laszlo with The Technophile. The man called police. One of them cute little oryx. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, one of them big old, one of them big old danky looking <laughs> hoovers. <laughs> if your radio sounds Man, funny in the morning, the you're listening to Imus in the morning. Pakistan is condemning now the two new explosions. Pakistan said it would soon conduct its own nuclear oh, test. Good. Pakistan's oh, uh, U.S. ambassador Riaz Kokar had this reaction. It seems that India's objectives are to gate crash into great power status and impose its hegemony in the entire Indian Ocean. Hegemony, I like that. Hey, mm. William F. Punja. <laughs> <laughs> hegemony. <laughs> I know what time it is. <laughs> in the morning. You may not need it, but you sure do want it. 98.1 The Peak. WPEK. Gentlemen, we're back here at Radio Free DC, the G. Gordon Liddy Show. My guest is Michael S. Hyatt. He is the author of The Millennium Bug, How to Survive the Coming Chaos. It's published by Regnery. You can get it in bookstores, but if uh, you're not near a bookstore or for some other reason you don't want to go to a bookstore, why just dial this toll-free number, 1-888-219-4747. Now write that down, one 888 Four seven four seven, and if you didn't get that, that's okay. Just call in. We have the number here. We'll be happy to give it to you. That's another part of uh, Cameron's uh, work. And Cameron has very little to do, and so that gives him things to do, and uh, we're ha happy for that. All right, uh, we have a lot of folks here who uh, want to talk to us. And John, uh, would you push the button because you have spilled water on your button pushing machine, and so you had to borrow mine. <laughs> so I don't have one. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, Steve. Hi there. Uh, I'm curious if uh, you or your guest have any information or statistics about what, if anything, is being done to stop dishonest or incompetent computer consultants uh, from basically cashing in on the hype, uh, and also how accurate the uh, Y2K standards testing programs are at guaranteeing uh, compliance once the time really comes. Well, there's a lot of people attempting to guarantee compliance, but uh, I don't think that, at, at this point at least, there's not really anything that's universally recognized. And, of course, there are dishonest uh, computer people trying to take advantage of this. And as far as incompetent computer uh, people, that's why we're in this mess to begin with. Right. So I, I don't uh, really expect um, people are going to take uh, advantage of this bonanza. There are a lot of people, aren't they, uh, uh, Steve and Michael, who uh, are retired folks whose uh, their experience is in COBOL and BASIC yes. and things like that, and they're being uh, brought out of retirement with lush contracts because they can, uh, so to speak, speak the language. Absolutely. Uh, they are. <clears throat> I get a lot of calls all the time, and if you're just willing to try, they're like, yeah, we'll throw money at this project. Uh, you've basically got an open-ended budget because they know what the consequences are, and if you're just willing to try to help them, they'll give you anything. And... Uh, I really think that we may be getting a lot of bad help. <laughs> well, for the right for the right amount of money, I can go in there and, and turn a, a uh, moderate problem into chaos. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I was just curious if uh, so you don't have any statistics or has, have have any of these types of things come up in say the banking industry where dates are being projected five, ten, or thirty years out, and what they thought was compliant actually turned out not to be compliant. No, but the typical thing is that. And by the way, the, the corporations are engaged in an enormous amount of spin control right now because their uh, stock values at risk. And so everybody's uh, chanting the same kind of mantra, and that is that our programs are going to be completely compliant by the end of this year. We'll have another year for testing. So mm. you're not getting a lot of those anecdotes out. But I hear through the grapevine, people are calling me all the time and telling me, you know, hey, if anything, you're underestimating this. I'm working on a year 2000 problem uh, project, and it's, it's enormous. Boy, okay. Well, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, Duke, you're on the air. Uh, hi. It's an uh, honor to speak to you both. Thank you, Duke. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, I have a Macintosh computer, and I was wondering if that was going to be seriously affected uh, by the 2000 bug. Well, I'm not a Macintosh user, and I hate to admit this, but the Macintoshes are safe. They've been compliant from the very beginning. Wow, oh. isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? Gee, that's you're, you're in good hands. Okay, well, thank you so much. Well, you're there's a happy guy. You can tell right from his voice. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke. Right? You see him wiping his brow. Okay, uh, Brian, you're on the air. Uh, yes, I was wondering, what kind of safeguards is the government um, trying to implement to prevent total breakdown of society? Well, if, if, um, if any are going on, I don't know about them, because they're not talking about them, although there's enormous pressure from the, the government uh, accounting office for contingency planning. 
The Social Security Administration up until this point was saying we don't have a contingency plan because we're going to finish. They were forced by the GAO to engage in some contingency planning. They now have an official document. You can get it on their website. And, you know, admitted by their own people, it's not a very good plan because you can't write 43 million checks a month, which is how many checks they write through the financial uh, management services, and do that manually. But they've, they've got something on paper. What's going to happen to their um, records of all the people if their computer system totally goes down? You have the total anarchy you were talking about earlier. Well, that's right, and that's why I advocate in the book that you need to get hard copies of important documents and put them someplace where you can retrieve them necessary, uh, if necessary, so that you can prove, for example, your citizenship, your marital status, what property you own, what loans or debts are outstanding, and how much you've paid on them, because you don't want to be at the mercy of somebody else who has different information. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I would, I would uh, su strongly suggest is that uh, you learn how to use a firearm safely and accurately and uh, get yourself uh, numbers of them. One thing I can say about uh, Mrs. Liddy and our family of uh, Marines, SEALs, and Army uh, people and everything like that, uh, we've got uh, Springfields, we've got uh, M1As, we've got uh, H-Bars, uh, we've got semi-automatics, we've got revolvers, <laughs> we've got just about everything going. And, uh, you know, if the social order breaks down, uh, the breakdown ends at our property. And you come on there and you're a dead man. Okay, uh, Bill, you're on the air. Yes, I have a lot of money in 401ks and IRAs that I can't get to for 10 years. What can I do to protect that money? Well, I'm not an investment consultant uh, or analyst, and so I'm not sure that I can offer you much help except anecdotal help. I can tell you what a doctor friend of mine just did uh, recently who had a lot of money in 401s is uh, to cash those out and to put them in some hard assets he could take possession of. I think it may be, my own personal opinion, too early to do that. I would simply keep an eye on the markets and realize that this could unravel very quickly if it does unravel. And by unraveling, <clears throat> do, you, uh, do you mean... Um, a market crash because you know the market's very very high right now and a lot of people are saying that all it's going to do is just it's just waiting for a trigger and then it's going to go down or do you mean uh, a situation where there's just utter chaos well it could be either one but i think that once corporations begin to truly disclose their year 2000 financial liabilities what it's costing them to repair these systems mm -hmm. and the fact that they're not gaining any additional productivity or functionality yeah. They're simply spending this enormous amount of money that's coming right out of the shareholders' pockets, by the way, just to stay in business. Mm. And people start fleeing out of the stock market to find a better investment. You know, then that's that's the thing to watch for. Would I? Uh, well, you're not an investment uh, uh, advisor, and what have you? But I'm just wondering uh, if government bonds would not be uh, uh, a better investment. I mean, you, I'm just you nervous know. about anything I can't take possession of. Well, because, you can take possession of the bond, but is it going to be worth anything if if the government uh, is in chaos? Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. Mm. The last one I'd bet on is the government. Well, that's true. In in, in most cases, you're certainly true <laughs> about that. bunch of bureaucrats down there in Washington, D.C., all trying to figure out how to raise your taxes and, uh, and charge you double on your parking meter. Uh, Gary, you're, yeah. uh, you're on the air, my friend. All right, thank you. I love your show. Thank you. I was wanting to ask the, the author of the book what the, uh, the cost to, to fix the per line of code and what kind of profit uh, can the companies expect that are doing the fixing it? I don't know what the profit is, but I can tell you that uh, they were estimating about a year ago that it was going to cost about $0.90 cents, uh, per line of code. And then they ratcheted it down to about $0.50 cents because of some of the automated tools that came on board. But what they haven't factored yet is the rising price of programmers. And that's steadily going up with signing bonuses and all kinds of things. I mean, these, these could be the celebrity athletes of uh, the next Especially year. Especially the older ones, right? Yeah, exactly. They it, built it, these it, systems. To, to, to fix the line of code, automating it, I mean, isn't it still just a, a tremendously tedious task? I mean, it can pull some of the stuff out, but the programmers have to go actually go back in and actually program those lines. If you talk to any programmers that are working on year 2000 projects, they hate them. They're tedious. They're error prone. They're not rewarding. Somebody that's had about three months worth of uh, COBOL programming experience can do this work, but it's enormously tedious and it's very frustrating. It's not very satisfying at all. You never get done with it. But all right. But thank you, you much. But you do make good money. But you do make good money. Well, wow, it's. Uh... That that's, that sounds like this business, John. <laughs> it's tedious. <laughs> There's no reward. 
but we don't have the saving grace of making good money. <laughs> right. But you're helping people. But we, we're helping people. We're, we're, we're attempt, certainly attempting to help people. All right. Uh, I just want to remind people uh, that uh, this program, of course, will come to an end in just a few minutes. But uh, the information that is available, plus a heck of a lot more, is all contained in my guest's book. The, my guest, of course, is Michael S. Hyatt. The name of the book, you want to write this down, The Millennium Bug. I will spell millennium for those of you who are challenged from having uh, graduated from public schools. It's M-I-L-L-E-N-N-I-U-M. The Millennium Bug, How to Survive the Coming Chaos. And it is published by Regnery. That's R-E-G-N-E-R-Y. Uh, which is, you know, one of the major uh, uh, publishing companies. It's available th through your mainstream bookstores or, John, let me have that number again, 1-888-219-4747. Okay, uh, m m Mr. Hyatt, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about the, the power grid system, uh, now, are you aware uh, that the bulk of uh, electrical power in this country is transported long distances over ultra-high frequency uh, uh, wires which require step-up and step-down transmitters that are uh, extremely uh, difficult to replace if anything should happen to them because they're not even manufactured in this country? Um, is anybody, uh, are they stockpiling those? Are they doing anything? Not that I know of. In electrical utilities, because we're dealing primarily with uh, embedded chip systems. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, when I called my local electrical utility company, they had one entire department that dealt with the business side, collecting money from their customers, paying their vendors, and so forth. Those mm -hmm. people were aware of the U2, U2000 problem. But when you got to the engineers that actually manage the electrical generation and distribution system, much less awareness there. And mm. so they're way far behind the uh, the the curve on that. Wow! In other words, they're just uh, looking forward to generating more and distributing more. And right. It, and it, it's this other thing. It's it's not our problem, man. It's the That's other right. guy. That's right. Happily okay. going on their way. Happily going on their way. Oh boy. Um, the uh, the the FAA have they said anything uh, about uh, what we can expect? Uh, no, because again, everybody's trying to sort of uh, quell the possibility of, of public panic. Uh, IBM came out and said that 38 of their uh, computer systems, they have about 250, will have to be replaced. They cannot be repaired. They have to be completely replaced. Mm -hmm. The FAA, believe it or not, some of their computers are still using vacuum tubes. Oh, boy. That's how ancient they are. Whew. Oh, my. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem without the uh, the Y two K thing there. That's with right. The, the vacuum tubes. Holy smoke! All right. Well, that music cue means that we've run out of time. My thanks to uh, Michael S. Hyatt, the author of the Millennium Bug, published by uh, Regnery. Um, time's a wasting, folks. It's uh, it's now halfway through 1998, uh, and that means you've got about 18 months before, as the Germans would call it, Der Tag. So, uh, a word to the wise. You want to get a hold of a copy of The Millennium Bug by Michael S. Hyatt and read it and weep. But uh, he does have some very practical uh, suggestions as to what you can do uh, to uh, save yourself. All right, that's it for this hour of Radio Free DC, the G. Gordon Liddy Show. My Chevy K1500 pickup was running rough, and the fuel mileage was off. I had a sample of Dyson Oil Synergen 120-plus octane booster, and I put it in the gas tank to see what would happen. Well, guess what? Just as soon as that stuff hit the fuel injectors, I could feel the engine running smoother instantly. And the fuel mileage is improving every day. Take it from me, these Synergen products work. Now with a minimum investment, working full or part-time, you can become a distributor for these great Synergen products from Dyson Oil. With NASCAR legend Cale Yarborough as the national spokesman for Synergen and top NASCAR and NHRA race teams using Synergen, you're in good company for a successful business venture. I urge you to call now and take advantage of this great opportunity to own your own business and make money doing something you enjoy. Call toll-free 1-888-397-6645.
That's 1-888-397-6645. One more time. 1-888-397-6645. Don't touch that dial. You don't know where it's been. 98.1 The Peak. WPEK. 98.1 The Peak is WPEK, Seneca, Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson. For news, talk, and sports on FM.